Hello and welcome to Covered Wheel. I'm Skid Viss. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you how to use the website, going through the basics of the wheel strategy and how to enter that data. Uh, so the first thing you'll want to do is, of course, join our Discord because uh, we can talk there and answer any questions you might have. And maybe you can suggest some new features for the website. The second thing you'll want to do is create an account. If you haven't done so already, you can click on the sign up for free button, create a username, add your email address and some passwords, accept the terms and policy, and you'll get an email to confirm your email address and then you'll be able to sign into the website. So once you can sign in, you'll be taken to this view. And the first thing you'll want to do is enter the ticker for the company that you're or the underlying or the stock that you're trying to keep track of. So in our example, we will do AMC. And so and then you can tab out of that or hit the lookup button. And this will show you uh, information about the company that you're looking for, the ticker that you're looking for. So once you're ready, click open AMC position or whatever the company is. And you'll be brought over here where you'll get uh, the name of the company, uh, the last price that it was at, uh, and today's date. Um, the next thing you'll see is this add step button. And so here's where you'll add the information for your options trade. So in this case, we're going to start with a cash secured put because we do not own the stock. So we will select cash secured put from this list. Of course, you can buy to open a call or buy to open a put if you wanted to do that, or if you have a certain amount of shares you can put in that you bought the shares or buy the shares here uh, but in our example we will do a cash secured put the enter date will be today's date or the date that you did the transaction if it's not today um, and then the expiration date will be the expiration date of the option so in our example the expiration date will be april 23rd if we wanted to change that we could just click this side icon here and it will give us uh, all the dates it will automatically default to the next friday from the entered date or from today basically so if you needed to change that make sure to pay attention to the dates because it will default the entered date will default to today and the expiration date will default to the first friday after today the next thing we'll want to do is put in our premium so when we're selling options or buying options, we have to either buy or uh, sell at a premium. And in this example, we will do 36 cents. So I will just type in 0.36 here. Um, if we had any commissions or fees we wanted to keep track of, we could enter them here and they will be subtracted from the total amount. And then we'll want to put in the strike price. And in my example, it'll be $9. So I'll just change this to 9.5 and the number of shares per contract is 100 shares if we didn't have 100 shares and you just wanted to track that you had maybe 89 shares of a stock and you were gonna do something with that later you can enter the different number here or of course if you're opening multiple contracts you can change this number to 500 shares or whatever um, it is you want to do in this example, we'll just stick to 100 shares and it will tell us the total here. Our premium of 36 cents times 100 is $36. So once we hit save, it will be listed here at the top level of the wheel. Um, you will now see how many days to expiration for the option uh, that is listed here and you will be seeing the date as well. You'll see a number here that shows you how many legs you have or how many steps you've added to this particular wheel. Um, you'll also see some basic information about the last transaction that was added. So in this case, this is uh, option notation saying negative one means you sold a contract. Um, the X just means times. So one contract for April 23rd at a $9.5 strike price and we sold a put, which is what we do when we do a cash secured put. This next section here will show us our cost basis. So if we had bought the stock 
Uh, it would tell us what we are currently sitting at as far as how much we've paid for the stock. Um, and then this little profit and loss indicator will show you how much profit you've made off of selling premiums or lost off of uh, premiums. Um, if you had shares, this would tell you the price that you should sell your shares at if you were to sell them. Uh, it's basically your adjusted cost basis divided by the number of shares that you have. Um, and this again will show you your uh, credit and debit, just like the profit and loss, it will show you all of your credits and debits uh, tallied together. If you wanted to close this wheel, you were done with it, you didn't want to do any more trades for this particular ticker, you could just click on this and it would close it and move it to the closed positions tab. But we can also click on this little plus and this will show us our current legs uh, in a table form um, and it will show you the action. In this case, CSP stands for cash secured put. It will show us the enter date, the expire date, uh, the strike price. And this little icon here is when you enter the information, if it finds an actual matching record in the options chain, it will link to it. So if I click on this, it will open Yahoo Finance and show that particular uh, option leg that we just entered. And then this again summarizes our last transaction, uh, 36 cent premium times 100 shares. If we had any commissions or fees, that would be listed here as a negative number. Um, and then the total, of course. Um, this section here is PPD stands for premium per day. Um, it basically divides your premium total divided by the number of dates, uh, days between the enter date and the expiration date. So this is assuming there's five days between Monday and Friday. So it's dividing the premium that we got by five days, which results in $7.20 a day in premium. It's just a way to keep track of whether or not you're getting a lot of premium per day based on this transaction. To the right of this, we'll have three buttons here that uh, will let us do different things. This first one here is just an edit button. If we accidentally put in the wrong date or uh, anything like that, we can go ahead and change that information. Um, if we put the wrong expiration date or the wrong premium, any of that information, we can go ahead and update this particular leg. Uh, we're gonna leave that as it is. The next button is the important one. This will let you close your leg. Uh, so basically when you have a cash secured put, um, you don't wanna let it just expire worthless. Maybe you'll want to uh, buy to close it. And this is where you would note that down. So you would click on this, you'll get the same information screen as usual, but now the drop downs will be limited. It will either say buy to close or you were assigned the cash secured put. So in our example, we'll just buy to close. As you can see, it adapts to the information being selected here. So now all we need is the enter date, uh, the premium that we bought to close for, um, and everything else should stay the same unless there's a fee. And then once you do that, you'll notice now that everything is kind of grayed out. That lets you know that everything is closed. Um, so that's an easy way to keep track of what's open and what's closed. Um, the furthest right icon just lets you delete this leg, this information, this transaction. So you can go ahead and select that and get rid of it in case you accidentally marked it as closed or you put in the wrong information or you closed the wrong leg. Uh, so now in this case, let's go ahead and instead of buying to close, we'll say we were assigned. So now we are assigned. We have the share price set for us at 9.5. The number of shares, everything is good. We can just go ahead and save this. And again, you'll see everything is grayed out. Uh, but now you'll notice here at the top, uh, this tells us that we bought a stock and that we spent $914 because that is the strike price minus our premium. As you can see here, the strike price was 9.5. We bought 100 shares, so it's $950. We got a premium for selling that put of $36, so it's subtracting that from the total amount. 
giving us the adjusted cost basis and our profit and loss. And as I mentioned earlier, it's gonna show you the new price that you should target for selling your shares to stay above your cost basis. Now that we have the shares, we can do a covered call. So we'll come back into add step. We'll select from this list here. As you can see, there's a lot more to select now. Um, you get a lot more options as you go through here. So now you can sell the shares if you just want to get out of this underlying, or you can uh, do a covered call or any of these other options that are available. If you wanted to open perhaps another cash secured put, um, you could do that here. But in our example, we'll just go ahead and select the covered call. We'll go ahead and pick a new premium that we have here for our covered call. So it'll be 48 cents with a strike price again of 9.5. So now we'll get a premium of $48. Save that. You'll see the symbol for it. This, the shorthand CC stands for covered call. If you hover over any of these, it'll tell you what it means. For instance, this ACSP means you were assigned a cash secured put. And again, uh, you'll have all the information that you entered. And if there's a link to it, it will be listed here in this section. And just like the other one, you can go ahead and click on the cart and then either buy to close or uh, you were assigned the covered call and had the shares pulled away. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And now we've closed everything out. As you can see, we took in a credit of 1034 total and we had a debit of 950 and our profit and loss is matched at 84. This information here on the side will be a summary of most of your uh, transactions. So again, it'll show you your credits, debits, and your cost basis, just like you're seeing here, but it will do it for all of the wheels that you enter. Um, and then this will also do it um, just on the cost basis. And this will be a summary for the current year. It will basically take your profits and divide it by the number of days and transactions. So in this particular case, uh, we opened and closed everything on the same day, but as you start using this, it will keep a tally of the days that you opened it and uh, the current date, and it will divide these numbers appropriately so that you can kind of get an estimate on what your averages are for the year. As we discussed earlier, if you wanted to uh, be done with this particular underlying, you don't want to mess with AMC anymore, you can go ahead and close this and now it's done and you can just create another one. Um, you can also go into your closed positions tab and it will show you all of the things that you have closed. If you wanted to reopen it and do another AMC and you didn't wanna create a new wheel for it, uh, you can just check that and it goes away and now it's back in the open positions. If you wanted to see what everyone else in the site has been doing, you can click on all open and this will show you all the open legs that all the users have. And if they're verified, you'll see yes. And you can click on that to go to Yahoo Finance. As far as your own transactions, you can come to the options log and it will show you everything that you've done uh, since you started using this. You'll also have the option to download all your transactions as a CSV. You'll also have that option over here for all open. So you can download everyone's transactions as a CSV and run it through Excel and figure out your next strategy. Also, of course, in the top of the page, you'll see the newest plays that people have been doing. You can click on any ticker symbol and see just the transactions on that particular ticker. Of course, with users, the same thing. You can see the users that have the most activity are listed here and you can see what they're doing just by clicking on their name and you'll see all their open transactions. That's all there is to it for now. Um, like I said, feel free to join the Discord and uh, discuss with me anything that you'd like to see added to this. I've got a lot of plans for this um, and I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks.